thought I'd cake something that I've never eaten in real life, but is really popular. And that is a sweet potato casserole for Thanksgiving. American Thanksgiving, I should clarify. I just want to add that I never had this in real life, and I also never had this as cake. Oh, I'm you sorry. Took it away. I, yes, I did take it away. Yeah. I worked hard on it. For this cake, I baked my sweet potato cake, which is basically my carrot, it's not basically, it is my carrot cake recipe, and I replaced the grated carrots with grated sweet potato. It's just like this, but imagine that all those carrots are sweet potatoes. I made my recipe twice and baked it in two rectangular pans. One of the pans is my regular, or what I consider a regular cake pan with the nice straight sides, three inches high. The other cake I baked in the type of rectangular pan you would find anywhere, like because they have beveled edges, and I find most casserole dishes have beveled edges. If you don't have the bevels, would you not just carve them? Yes, excellent point, Orhan. And if you only have two beveled pans, then don't feel bad about that. Either. Nothing to feel bad about here. No. There's sweet potato cake. Why, yeah. why would we feel bad? Well, maybe if you didn't get any, then you would feel bad. Why are you here today and not Jocelyn? I actually said I want to do this interview. Oh, <laughs> why? So you could just... Should I pull the knife out of your back now? Okay. <laughs> I'll wait till the end of the episode. And now we're going to take a half hour break while Cody and I sip tea and eat the humps. Oh. We didn't film that. Let's just put some nice music here. Okay. <laughs> do you have... Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, we're back. Um, the next thing that I want to do is stack the cake with the beveled edge upside down on top of the other cake. Making sense? Yeah. So there's like a little bit of an A-line, but not quite enough. And now what I want to do is accentuate that. Now I want to make sure to round off the corners of the cake just a little bit with my serrated knife. Yeah, I said a little bit, so, or I went like this, that's too much, mm. just slightly. It's time to flip these cakes over and with the help of Sir Squeeze, I'm going to simple syrup them. Now you don't have to really saturate these cakes because one thing I find about, in particular, my sweet potato cake, my carrot cake, and my banana cake is they're so moist. Cakes with like fruits and vegetables are so moist, so we don't want to saturate it. It was so <laughs> moist, Rahan. Yes, keep talking. It was, I mean, it was spectacular. I made something new for this cake. I'm not just gonna fill this with Italian meringue buttercream. I'm gonna make brown sugar buttercream. Oh, that's what the smell was. Yeah, uh, you were here when I made oh. that. To make this buttercream, you simply take your egg whites, your brown sugar, and a little bit of salt, and you whisk that together in the bowl of your stand mixer and heat it on a double boiler and whisk that mixture until it's warm and the sugar starts to dissolve. Uh, once it reaches the perfect temperature, you can take it off and put it onto, I'm, I'm doing the motions. You can take it off the heat, put the bowl onto your stand mixer with a whip attachment and then begin to whip the mixture. And you wanna whip it until the bowl is cool to the touch. Not cold, but room temperature, no heat. At that point, you can start to add your butter in little pieces. And you will see it deflate somewhat because the fat in your butter, but it comes together. All of a sudden that fat sort of comes together when you keep whipping. Keep whipping, keep whipping. And finally, a touch of vanilla at the end. It smells amazing. So now I have my brown sugar buttercream. Ah, oh, life feels good. For everyone except Orhan, because he left. <laughs> Is there a link in the description or something? Yes, there's a link in the description and I'll make a whole new vlog with that recipe if you want to try it. I might only use brown sugar buttercream from now on. Oh yeah? So it was that good? It was that good. My cakes are ready to be filled with this luscious buttercream and I'm going to fill them upside down. And then go right into crumb cating. Crumb cating? Crumb cating. And then go right into crumb coating the whole cake. If you don't want to go to the lengths that I went to making this cake, you could make sweet potato cupcakes with brown sugar Swiss meringue buttercream and then just top it with candied pecans and 
marshmallows. Oh, God. Uh, once your crumb coat is chilled, you can ice the cake again. Um, I did use, did I? Yes, I did. I used a bench scraper to just help me smooth my sides, but you want to make sure you keep that bevel. The bevel is very important. When I was researching this, there's quite a debate on whether marshmallows belong on sweet potato casserole or not. There's one thing I want to do before I cover this cake with fondant. I want to roll out a sheet of beige colored fondant uh, that is bigger than the top surface of my cake. And then I'm going to place that sheet of fondant in the fridge to chill. This beige sheet of fondant will later be the top of this cake. So I used a bunch of leftover fondant I had in warm tones, and I came up with this sort of, it's really appropriate actually. It's kind it's, of like a reddish. It's a reddish, orangish, very fall Thanksgiving, looks like a casserole dish color. Like you have that pan in your house somewhere. Yes, somewhere. What I want to do is roll out my fondant larger than the cake so that there's enough to drape over the cake and immediately start smoothing. Uh, my fondant started to tear at the oh. corners. This is how I know it's getting cooler because when it gets cooler and drier around here, uh, so does my fondant. Ah, uh, but it happened, but I'm not gonna sweat it. I'll just call the seam hider a little bit later. So it wasn't that good of a cake anyway. What do you mean? No, it was, it was excellent. Out of all the cake scraps I've eaten in my life, <laughs> these were the best cake scraps I've ever had. So you really missed it. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of texture to my casserole dish. Looking up casserole dishes just made me want to buy a bunch of casserole dishes for no reason. <laughs> for this, I'm going to use a sculpting tool and I have a lot of like homemade rulers. You've seen me use them. It's basically just mat board that you would use in it, a framed picture. I have them cut from like a quarter of an inch to five inches. So like a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, one. One and a quarter, you get it, all the way up to five. And whenever I need a specific measurement, I like to use these boards. So I'm gonna use these boards and my sculpting tool and I'm gonna carefully go around the cake marking three lines. It's gonna add a lot of texture, but if I were to make a mistake or suddenly, you know, bump my arm and, and the line is crooked, that would be so noticeable. So just do it slowly. So you always wanna do this when the fondant is freshly put on the cake. If you let that fondant dry anymore, when it's time to press the lines in, you'll see cracks around the lines. So this is, you wanna do this now. Make your decision, lines or no lines. Some casserole dishes have no lines. I'm going to cut some handles for this cake. For these handles, I'm going to use some foam board and I'm basically just gonna trace a glass casserole dish that I have here onto the foam board and cut them out with an X-Acto knife. You know, I'm gonna need some sort of support to hold those handles on. So this sweet potato casserole is gonna have to look like it's completely full and brimming at the top of the casserole dish, as opposed to my butter chicken, which you could see the lip of the pot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm glad I thought this through, and what I need to do is cover one side of each of them. With the same <laughs> red-orange fondant that I covered my casserole dish. Lay it on top of each handle and carefully smooth it all along the parts that I've brushed with piping gel and now I'll trim away the excess. Um, so you make two? Yeah, two handles. I feel like a two-handled casserole dish is a better option. Like if it was one handle, <laughs> when you pulled it out of the oven, it, you would just drop it. So it's time to take my casserole dish out of the fridge and flip it over. And I have to say, it was <laughs> so easy to flip compared to flipping a giant Wendy's Frosty. I felt like a, like a, like a gladiator. That's how they measure gladiator strength. They yeah, they do. Flip this. this cake, and then they just keep giving them heavier cakes. Yeah. Are you not entertained? And what I want to do is take that beige sheet of fondant that we rolled out and carefully lay it on top. But before I do that, I have to make sure to brush around with clear piping gel, the top surface of the red-orange fondant. This alarm is to remind me to drink water. I set physical alarms in my phone because I don't drink enough water. It's only gonna go off every three minutes. No imagine. <laughs> now carefully pick up the sheet of beige fondant, lay it on top, smooth it all around, and then we're gonna place another silicone mat on top of the beige fondant. 
put a board. Flip back. Oh. I know. That's like too Because we need to trim this fondant so that it's just sort of the inner edge of the casserole dish. So that's another reason we're not trimming now because we need to trim it around the handles which are not on the cake yet. So I'm going to use bamboo skewers to help support these handles on my cake. I trimmed them to size, I measured them, I inserted the pointed part into the foam board handles and then what I have to do is add these handles with the orange red fondant facing up and I need to press the bamboo skewers into the cake until the handles meet the cake. Even though it's the underside of the cake, I do want to address the seams between the handle and the casserole dish, and I haven't forgotten about those tears in my corners. So I'm gonna make some fondant paste with a little bit of my colored fondant, clear food grade alcohol, and I'm gonna clean up those tears and the seams between the handle and the dish. So now it's time to flip this cake again. So I lay a silicone mat on top of the cake, cake board, flip! with ease. <laughs> it was almost that fast. Now it's time to remove the inner part of the beige fondant. Now, this might seem like a waste, but truthfully, there's no better way to do this because I don't need the entire surface of the cake to be covered in beige fondant. But if I had tried to roll it out to the exact size and then line it up while flipping it, it probably wouldn't have worked out. So this is the best way to do this. Oh yes, so this cake, as delicious as it is already, Orhan, is going to be topped with brulee marshmallows and some spiced nuts. You melt your butter, you add your brown sugar, you let it melt a bit, then you throw in the pecans and you basically stir until they're completely coated in butter and sugar. And right before you're done, you put in a whole lot of cinnamon, stir to coat, and then you pour this whole mixture out onto a baking tray lined with a silicone mat or parchment paper, and you bake the nuts for like 10 minutes. And this just makes these spicy candied pecans that smell incredible. Cody, he's totally not listening to me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> or huh? What? I'm still talking about the sweet potato pin. Yes, I know. And I'm just listening to some queen. Well, listen to this person. queen. Listen to this queen. <laughs> listen to the cake queen. Do you understand? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, but wait, there was a hiccup in this cake. I'm thinking I'm just gonna brulee these marshmallows, throw some nuts on, and we're done. And then a member of our team decided to retire. I know you guys know Mr. Burns, right? So I started to brulee the marshmallows and they didn't brulee. He died on stage. On stage. On he died doing what he loved. Oh, That's what's important. That's so sad. So Cody was kind enough to run out and get a new member of the team. And I was trying to think of another pun because we had Bernie, Mr. Burns. This is Bernadette. Ooh, Bernadette. Bernadette. This was her first day, and she brulee the mini marshmallows beautifully. Well done, Bernadette, well done. She's very hot. She is very hot. <laughs> she was so hot. And now I can top this sweet potato cake and make it look like a sweet potato casserole. But before that, I need to tell you something. I am hosting a holiday baking live stream. On December 14th, live on Facebook, I'll be showing you how to make three incredible novelty treats for the holidays. Registration is now open, so head to the link in the description below. We'll be making a giant chocolate chip cookie cake, adorable reindeer cupcakes, and edible gifts. Those are the best types. So if you've been watching my cake videos and want to learn, this is the perfect chance. Take a baking class from me right in the comfort of your own kitchen. Registration closes on November 20th, so hurry over to that link in the description. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna eat cake. You can have cake on that day. Thank you. You're welcome. And now, the final reveal. If you guys want to see more delicious cakes like this, then click here and here. Come on, Bernadette, I'll find you a home. Where do you want to stay? <laughs>